Hello, my name's Alan and I'm making a tactics game and I'm still alive. It's been a while since I posted on the channel, about, must be at least two months, maybe three months at this stage. And where I've been is finding out that art is very hard. If you need a recap, last time I posted, I last devlog I posted on, I talked about, I wanted to take a break from working on my asset pack, tactics toolkit. And I wanted to start doing like other game dev stuff that I've been putting off for a very long time, like art. I wanted to try and get a art style ready for my game. I'll figure out what kind of art style I wanted. So I jumped into it. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm sitting here and holding my <laughs> mic like this, it's because I broke my mic arm one day. <laughs> so this is what we're going to have to deal with <laughs> until I figure it out. But anyway, don't ignore it. Don't worry about it. The game looks quite different than the last time you've seen it. <laughs> this is it right now. It's kind of not good looking, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. Basically, multiple experiments and me trying to figure out what to do. So first up, let's talk about the map. I've decided I wanted a 3D map. I decided a while ago after playing uh, Triangle Strategy because I really loved the map design in that game. So I was like, let's try and see if I can figure that out. And the map you're seeing is actually generated using uh, an asset pack that I found. And the asset pack is it's called Isometric Tiles Creator, which is super easy to use. And I'm using it combined with my asset pack and it, it actually worked out really good. I just had to like write a new uh, map manager to generate my grid and then everything else just kind of worked on top of that, which was like exactly as I planned the asset pack to work, which was pretty good. And this, Asset Pack has like a bunch of cool features. It has like props and has different biomes and it has roads. The tiles themselves though are still the ones that came with the Asset Pack. I haven't made my own yet, but I've done a little bit of research into that uh, after that because then I started looking into stuff like shaders. So I thought like if I have these kind of high quality uh, 3D tiles and then maybe I could put like a tune shader or something on top of them, maybe it would look kind of like 2D art, most of the time it ended up just not working. I need to learn how shaders work basically, which is a whole other thing that I'm going to jump into eventually, but not now because <laughs> it just takes too long. And then after that, I jumped into character art because I wanted to get actual isometric characters, actual animations running around my maps and seeing what kind of that led into. And oh boy, is isometric art hard. <laughs> trying to get characters working, well, it's so difficult. I really, really, really struggled trying to get like character shapes and trying to learn how to draw isometric characters. I wanted characters with kind of like dynamic poses. So there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of games use kind of these the same kind of sprite style where they're just kind of standing super still. They're standing super still and, you know, they're, they're just, just very little animation in them in general. And I can see why now, because it is so difficult to get uh, something that looks good. It's so it's so difficult to get it something that looks normal. But I just kept practicing. I kept trying. I kept practicing over and over and over again. Every day, well, every development day that I, that I have, uh, I was drawing little isometric characters. Sometimes they walked out nice, sometimes they looked fucking terrible. And really trying to find different techniques that I could use to figure this thing out. At one point I drew a guide, like a, I had a tile and then I had some lines come up on the tile to try and help me like, this is how wide a character should be, this is how long and tall a character should be. Uh, and that helped me a lot. Basically, I think a big thing is with isometric characters is you got to avoid straight lines you know in the beginning i was drawing shoulders very square and uh, hips very square when they should be going up in the same isometric line as like the tile beneath uh, that two by two step that two by one step that uh, you got to do for an isometric line but anyway i did that and i figured and it definitely helped and, and shapes started to come better with my practice and suddenly I was getting characters that looked isometric and I kind of thought like maybe this is a good time to look into trying to do animations so I immediately got rid of like trying to do any kind of character design and I just started drawing like blobs I started drawing shapes instead 
I, I drew this blue dude and I drew a purple dude and I drew like a green dude and then I animated them and I, I tried to like I was copying other games as well I've been playing a lot and studying other games and trying to figure out like not only a style that I like but something that's sustainable like I could I could I could try and do do amazing animations but you know just for me with my skill set it's not something I could make a full game doing I could spend like weeks doing one character's animations which isn't a good plan so it's about finding the level of quality and the level of ease and meeting somewhere in the middle I think at least for like a solo dev like myself and then as I was doing the animations I understood how difficult it is to animate an entire blob in one go so then I drew this dude I drew this kind of big tall dude um, and I separated out every single limb on him um, and animated each limb individually uh, and I think this is my best result to date uh, not 100% happy with it but I am pretty happy with it to be honest I thought like this is a nice way to go about it the only thing about this guy is he is big like he's like 80 pixels tall I think and while the blue this blue guy that's animating is like half that size and because of the how tall the dude is and how big he is it still took a lot longer to animate him compared to the blue guy even though he's all of his sprites are all nicely separated and stuff um so i don't know i'd maybe so i need to meet somewhere in the middle between those two i think i need to step down a bit um i drew another dude and i tried to give him like a very basic idle animation and that was pretty good i think like something like this is is decent and it was around this time when I was drawing these characters and animations is that I realized that I haven't put any of them into the game yet. And because I was in Ace Byte, when you're looking at the anime, you're looking at the image and you're drawing it, like every single pixel stands out to you. So if something's wrong, it's like, it's all you can see. And this animation is wrong and it sucks. And I need to figure out why it looks like this. So then I, actually put these characters into the game i would play some sprites got some idle animations running and i realized that all of this all of the like the things that were annoying me these little pixels you couldn't see them in an actual game and because I, and i was thinking about like games that i play like i don't really pay attention to i don't like sit and study the animations it's just if it if the animation conveys the thing you wanted to convey like like if it looks like an attack then it's an attack and i don't really care beyond that it doesn't bother me when I'm playing a game. So I need to have that mindset as well. And I need to think like that instead of like being like, oh, this pixel, that elbow looks funny. You know, it doesn't fucking matter. Nobody cares. So I should just do the best I can and then just put it into the game and then see what it looks like within the game. And that's what I did. And I think the animations look so much better from within the game than in a sprite. So I'm happy about that. And then I wanted to do another bit of thing that I'd been putting off, which was being able to rotate characters. And this actually took a, this was a pain in the ass, much harder than I thought it was going to be. So I got my big dude who was the closest to done, and I drew like the back version of him, and I gave him idle animation. I didn't give him the attack animation because I just didn't want to. I didn't need to for this purpose. But I gave him the idle animation, and then i got into the game and i started programming again finally after all this time trying to get him to walk in i'll give you the cliff notes on how it works basically within my pathfinder i have to keep track of the direction my character's facing so as he's moving i take the next tiles position and the previous tiles position and kind of minus them on each other and then you i have a direction right it's either um one zero zero one minus one zero or zero minus one and that'll give you the four possible directions my guy can travel in and then within that character's animator i'm using something called a blend tree and what a blend tree is is that you can give it a bunch of values and depending on the values it will play a specific animation so based on the direction he's moving in i can give my blend tree an x and y direction for example uh, and based on the X and Y, I can play a animation based on that. And that's what I did. So if it's one zero, you know, he's facing away from me. So I'm playing his face away sprite. If it's 
minus one, zero. He's facing towards me, so I'm playing a spider where he's facing towards me. And then instead of drawing four animations, I'm just mirroring them. But like, again, it doesn't fucking matter. You just, it just has to look like the way it's supposed to look. And I need to not get bogged down by the little details. But anyway, just doing the blend tree wasn't enough. I then had to, because just the character's direction isn't enough when I have a rotating camera. Um, so it has to be their direction in relation to the camera's position. So I got my character or my camera. I limited it to four possible uh, rotations on the map. So I can only face one of the four corners. Otherwise it was just wasn't working out very well. I think if you had like a, flea, a free flowing camera rotating around, you would need like eight sprites instead of four. So fuck that. We're just gonna keep it four on each one in each corner. It can just move between the corners. And it looks fine. I think it actually looks better than the weird states you can get in by like having the the map face you head on. And that was really tricky. Like that was a lot of vector maths involved in that. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm just gonna put the code on screen because honestly, it was a lot of trial and error. I was Googling, someone said something about dot uh, vectors and I did a dot vector and the numbers weren't quite right. And then I just kept fiddling with it until it just walked out. And this is the result and it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And where I am right now is that I'm still just doing it. Like this is hard work. This is honestly the closest I've been to quitting, <laughs> to be honest, because it's so hard. It's not my forte. It, it's so much more difficult than I thought. There's very little tutorials out there for um, character, isometric character art at least, right? Like I was Googling and you see like videos of people drawing it, but like actually stepping through and, and telling you how to do it, there isn't. And that's because you can't really teach it, can you? It's like, with programming, you know what, you wanna know to do something, you know what it is you want to do, and then you find a solution and then you just implement the solution and it's done. But with art, like you can find the solution that you need, but you can find an image to reference off of maybe. And but then you still need to practice. Like you, you need you need to have the art skill to draw the thing that you're looking at. Uh, and that just takes time and practice. And I don't have that practice yet. So I just got to keep doing it, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do it. And if I ever figure out how to draw like really nice isometric art, um, I'll be sure to do a tutorial on it to try and help other people do that as well. Uh, but I'm a long way from doing that just yet. Yeah, yeah, but I'm gonna leave it at that. I've been rambling for like half an hour. And <laughs> I have no idea what way this video is gonna turn out. I pretty much just press play and decided I'm just gonna talk instead of instead of like trying to script this out and stuff like that, because I just want to post and let you know that I'm alive. <laughs> and oh, I am still broken. I like to always form my devlogs around having something to talk about, like having a specific thing. This is the thing I did, and this is how you do it. That way you lay on something from the devlogs. Um, but I'm still in the middle of it. I'm still trying to figure out the how uh, before I can tell you, before I can tell you the how. Um, so yeah, this was just a ramble that I decided to do. And uh, give me some feedback if, if this was okay maybe i'll do more like this and that way i can post more um because yeah this was pretty low effort <laughs> by me but yeah thanks guys oh i forgot to say tactics cool kit my asset pack the thing this whole channel is built on is going on sale for the new year's sale didn't get on the previous sales but it's on the new year's sale so if you see this video and you're thinking about getting it um don't yet just wait wish list it and wait i'll do another post like when it goes on sale, I'll figure out whatever that is. And yeah, I'll do a post and we can see to remind everyone. But until then, thanks so much. Happy Christmas season and hope everyone has a great end of the year. Cheers, guys. Bye.